over my, I'm 65 years old now, and I've done so many different things in my life, and I kind of have this belief that we are capable of pretty much anything we put our minds to, okay? And um, I know that you have this belief that what we are is potential, okay? And unless we are intentional about examining ourselves and our potentials, then how will, will we ever know of what we are capable? Would you like to just talk about this perhaps free form for just a, a few minutes for the people out there that are watching? A thousand percent. I just want to zero in on the question, John. So is it more about how do people discover their potential? Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people are unaware that they have so much within them that, that they're not necessarily intentionally exploring. It's only if life actually examines them sometimes that people find out of what they are capable. Yeah, totally. I think, um, you know, if I look at my own experience, it's, um, you know, in life, this society, how it's set up, our relationship with our parents is, teaches us fear, right? Because they're here to protect us. Um, don't do this, do that, stay safe. And when we're young, when we're in that theta state, um, we learn that, we learn limitations. And then when you compile that in a world where, you know, it teaches you how to be a good cog in the wheel, it doesn't teach you how to be a great leader. It doesn't teach you how to overcome fear. It doesn't teach you how to pursue your passions. It doesn't teach you any of that. It teaches you go to school, get good grades, um, go to university, do good on your test, have a good resume. So you can market yourself and people could tell you what you're worth um, and put you down like a, a strict life path. But I think what the society has shown us is that it doesn't work for people. And when I grew up, there was a part of me that realized that's not for me, right? Taking that path, taking the traditional way wasn't for me. And how did I discover my potential? Well, I have to thank my father. And I think, um, and I'll kind of I'll kind of back into the realization I had. You know, when you play sports, and this is why I think social gatherings, challenging yourself, putting yourself into a goal-oriented environment is really important. Um, there's fear, right? There's fear that's present. Can I do it? Can I get the outcome? Am I good enough? Can I be consistent? So when you're faced with that, the narrative is always or could be very limiting. Right. And I think we get that narrative from our parents, right? When we learn, we're impressed upon, you know, that limiting belief. And I think that's the gift of uh, part of what your parents give us. It's that gift of how do we build a relationship with fear and then use that to propel past it. So <laughs> every day when I was going and I got, you know, and this is why positive influence is really important, surrounding yourself with the right people. Um, if you have people who are naysayers who say you can't do it, they're projecting their fear onto you, you'll start to believe that. You'll create a world based on those influences. And the one thing I, as my mom was probably the one trying to keep me safe, my dad was the one pushing me to reach my potential, right? And I think it's really important we have those influences in our life, right? You have people who are going to encourage you to follow what's in your heart. Because I think when you live a life of not pursuing what's in your heart. Imagine it's like you're on your deathbed, future pace it to when you're in your last days and you're like, oh, I didn't have the courage to follow what was in my heart. I mean, that's a pretty devastating life in my mind. I mean, I can't think of anything worse. I'm more scared of that than going down the path and doing what I wanna do. And these conversations going back to my dad that he had, every sport game, every practice building me up, telling me I can do it. You're the best out there. You can win the game. You've got the most talent. Keep working, keep working. You know, whether I believed it at the time or not, um, over time, hearing it enough, when you surround yourself with these positive influences, you start to become that, right? You start to develop that mindset that, well, I don't care what life throws at me. I could do it. Because even when you get your ass kicked, even when you have challenges, and let's say you don't get the outcome that you want, you realize that, wow, you know, it doesn't really matter. And I think a lot of people put this strain on, is it going to be the way I expect? It doesn't matter, right? If you do it the first, second, or third time, you don't get the result you want. Maybe it's the fourth, fifth, and sixth time that you do get the result. It's just that commitment of putting one step in front of the other. And that's what I've learned. I've learned that 
there was really nothing to be scared of. Nothing. Because those times where you perceive it as failure, it's just the evolution. Those are the experiences you needed to go through to become that person, to find that belief, to realize that actually, what the hell am I afraid of? Nothing, right? So I think it's that positive influence. I think having those positive influences so you can break through that limiting belief or that fear that our parents teach us. And the gift behind that is everything that you want, right? Pursuing the life that you want. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, it reminds me of something Jim Rohn said. I think he said something along the lines of we become the average of the five people that we spend the most time with. Yeah. And I used in a broadcast very recently, I used an image I found on Pinterest or Google Images or somewhere, and it says, if you hang out with six idiots, you'll become the seventh. If you hang out with six millionaires, you'll become the seventh. Okay. So, yeah, this idea of actually having a positive peer group that are go-getters and all oriented towards their own success puts you in that fertile, uplifting, inspirational environment. And you can't fail but to lift up your own life. Absolutely. It's so true. It's like <clears throat> if I would have took my mom's advice my whole life, I would have been in a box, right? Probably with a dress style and a haircut I didn't like, right? And it's like, because her job was to keep me safe. But I've learned that I'm not going to take advice from somebody who's not down the path that I want to be on. Because of that, they've listened to a voice that didn't get them what they want, right? And it's, you know, it takes a little bit of faith and trust in that process.